Despite some large tropical storm making its way up the coast, uh, despite uh, tiny viruses sickening, killing, and scaring people throughout the world, despite violence in the land, despite anger and hatred that rears its head in ways both ancient and new, despite all of that, we can still boldly pronounce, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. God is still with us, even when we wrestle not only with the Almighty, but with others, and even with ourselves. We can rejoice and be glad because we have hope in our hearts through Christ. Hello, and welcome to the online worship service of Robinson Memorial Presbyterian Church in Gastonia, North Carolina. It is Sunday, August 2nd, 2020. For weeks now, school administrators, uh, teachers, staff, parents, uh, even students themselves, have all been in perhaps the most difficult wrestling matches of their careers or maybe even of their lives. What is the right thing to do during a pandemic? If you're watching this service to see if I reveal the solution to all of this wrestling about safe schools, I'm afraid you're going to be disappointed. Don't have the answers. Meanwhile, our Old Testament reading today from Genesis continues with the story of Jacob. And this time, he finds himself embroiled in a heated wrestling match with some equally tenacious being. Just who was he wrestling? Stay tuned for more on that. Speaking of schools, we are at the beginning of week two of a challenge to collect school supplies for the students at Robinson Elementary School, which is the church's next door neighbor. The challenge came from Union Presbyterian Church and New Hope Presbyterian, who are collecting for Beam Elementary and New Hope Elementary, respectively. We want to see which church family can collect the most for their school. You know, we know we might be smaller than those two churches in terms of the number of members, but we also know Robinson has more heart. And to show just how much commitment the pastors of those two other churches have, James at Union has been on vacation for the past week. And Chris at New Hope is currently on vacation. Notice who is not on vacation. Let's show them how dedicated Robinson Memorial is to the cause. Remember the big blue box will be outside the ramp leading to the upstairs office area. Place your donations inside and be sure to securely replace the lid, which has been clearly marked by Darla. Among the items desired by Robinson Elementary are number two pencils, colored pencils, crayons with 24 colors, jumbo glue sticks, washable markers, child scissors, pump bottles with hand sanitizer, and a sure sign that sharing of items won't be allowed, individual pencil sharpeners. The full list can be found on our website. We'll be collecting donations through the end of the month. You may recall last week we said we'd be celebrating the Sacrament of the Lord's Supper during today's online service. Now, doing communion virtually is not the ideal method, but it's still legitimate, and we encourage your participation. 
if you have not already prepared at home your, your bread and your drink for communion, might I suggest that you pause this recording now to accomplish that. It will be less jarring and make your worship service more fulfilling and more complete if you don't need to stop watching it during the middle. Now the method I will be using this time is by intention. That is where the communicate tears off a piece of the bread and then dips it into a common cup or chalice containing the wine or juice and then consumes the dipped bread. The practice is thought to date back to the 4th century AD, whereas the uh, passing of trays with individual cups dates back only to the late 19th century. Nowadays, in the age of coronaviruses, some people are rethinking the idea of everyone touching the same loaf of bread and the use of a common cup. But for today, hopefully in the safety of your home, we invite you to take part in this ancient ritual of communion by intention. By the way, thanks to Mac for not only getting sourdough bread from Jackson's for us to use for communion today, but also making sure a couple of members he delivers our worship service DVDs to also had similar bread to use for their communion celebration. You know, we are truly blessed with wonderful people in the Robinson Memorial family. Now, I think it's time for us to prepare our hearts, our minds, and our bodies to worship the Lord. Please join in with our responsive call to worship. The words will appear on your screen. Hear a just cause, O Lord. Attend to our cries. Give ear to prayers from lips free of deceit. I call upon you, for you will answer me, O God. Incline your ear to me. Hear my words. Wondrously show your steadfast love, O Savior, of those who seek refuge from their adversaries at your right hand. As for me, I shall behold your face in righteousness. When I awake, I shall be satisfied beholding your likeness. Let us worship God. Ready to do some uh, singing of praises to the Lord? Our opening hymn for today is, He Touched Me. The lyrics will appear at the bottom of your screen.
Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord, one day is like a thousand years. And a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about this promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. These words we find in 2 Peter, but the guarantee comes from Christ. With that in mind, won't you join with us in our prayer of confession? The words will appear on your screen. Merciful God, you teach us compassion, and we practice bigotry. You implore us to trust you while we create idols. You send Christ as a witness that you will not forsake us. Yet we fret over matters as though you care not at all. Forgive our compulsion to control our own destiny. Look kindly upon us when we fear for our future. Have mercy upon us when we mismanage your grace. We are your people. Help us to dwell in your promise. And all God's people said, Amen. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. This proves God's love for us. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. Much more surely then, now that we have been justified by His blood, will we be saved through Him from the wrath of God. Friends, Believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. This being the first Sunday of the month, while we give thanks and dedicate your gifts, tithes, and offerings, we also want to lift up your special five cents a meal offerings. In normal times during our first worship service of the month, when we're all in our sanctuary, after sending around our regular offering plates, attendees would come forward to place cash, checks, and sometimes little baggies containing several dollars worth of change, and you know who you are. Regardless of the method or the amount, your gifts for the Five Cents a Meal program have a big impact on hunger issues in our own community through Crisis Assistance Ministry and beyond through the various programs and grants of the Presbytery of Western North Carolina. Thank you for your support of both this church and those in need of help. Now, let us dedicate your offerings to God. Shall we pray? Gracious God, your compassion brings wholeness and your forgiveness brings promise of new life. Through Christ, the gifts of your grace are available to all. 
we place ourselves before you as recipients of your mercy. We make our offerings to you in response to Christ's call. Accept them as tributes to your glory as we dedicate ourselves anew to Christ's service. Amen. Doug Alt is back with another scripture reading for today. Listen now for the word of our Lord. Our scripture reading for today is from the book of Genesis, chapter 32, verses 22 through 31. That night Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his eleven sons and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. After he had sent them across the stream, he sent over all of his possessions. So Jacob was left alone. And a man wrestled with him till daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip, so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, Let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. The man asked him, What is your name? Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, Your name will no longer be Jacob but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. Jacob said, Please tell me your name. But he replied, Why do you ask my name? Then he blessed him there. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, It is because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. The sun rose above him as he passed Peniel and he was limping because of his hip. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Back when I was in junior high, I heard some of the guys in the church youth group talk rather animatedly about wrestling, how exciting it was, and who their favorites were. At the time, my knowledge of wrestling was limited to what we learned in PE classes and attending a few team competitions at the school. And that certainly wasn't anything to get these guys so worked up about, was it? Well, they, of course, have been talking about professional wrestling or wrestling. In those days, professional wrestling had regional hubs rather than worldwide audiences. Indianapolis was one of those hubs, with its own heroes like Dick the Bruiser and the villains who represented all sorts of stereotypes of people who we found suspicious. One Saturday afternoon, I tuned in to a television broadcast just to see what all the hubbub was about. As a young teen, I found myself enthralled by these matches and the the characters that were being portrayed there, with simple good versus evil storylines. My infatuation didn't really last beyond a year, particularly as it became clear that the matches were all staged. The wrestlers weren't mortal enemies, but rather partners and participants in an entertainment enterprise, just playing roles like other actors on TV or in films. I had other things on my mind and things to do. Instead of watching grown men play like they're fighting, In our Old Testament reading from Genesis, 
we once again encounter Jacob. But not the bold and brash Jacob of his younger days. On this particular night, he is scared. He is wrestling with his past and his immediate future. Jacob, you may recall, was a son of Isaac, who was the son of Abraham. Jacob, though, was a twin. His brother Esau emerged from the womb first, with Jacob firmly holding on to Esau's ankle, coming right behind him. Despite being twins, the, the two boys were not at all alike in appearance or, for that matter, manner. Esau was a muscular outdoorsman who looked at the world from a straightforward perspective. Jacob was a slighter man and a schemer. He tricked his older brother into selling his birthright for a bowl of stew and later tricking his father in order to obtain the blessing intended for Esau. Well, then he hightailed it out of the region to go find a wife in the land of his grandfather, leaving behind an enraged brother. Now, about 20 years later, he is leaving again, but uh, this time fleeing from an enraged father-in-law, and heading back to the land first promised by God to his grandfather. Well, this puts Jacob in the middle of what we would call between a rock and a hard place, because what lies ahead of him is the brother he wronged two decades earlier. Would the old rivalries resurface? Would Esau still be angry with him, angry enough to kill him. Messengers Job had sent out in advance came back to report Esau was now coming to him along with 400 men. Not what you would say a good sign. So Jacob sent more messengers ahead with gifts of livestock hoping to appease Esau. Unsure whether these gifts would prevent Esau from extracting revenge on him, Jacob divides up his large family, servants, and possessions, and sends them away, hopefully out of harm's way. Jacob is left to spend the dark night alone along the bank of the Jabbok River. Did I say alone? Well, not quite alone. Unexpectedly, during the darkness of night, we are told a man appears and begins wrestling with Jacob. This must have been the ultimate wrestling match because it continues, apparently pretty evenly, until nearly daybreak even at least until the mysterious wrestler touched the socket of Jacob's hip, putting it out of joint. However, though injured, Jacob wouldn't let go of the man. Perhaps not surprising from the one who at birth kept clutching Esau's ankle. Let me go, the man says to Jacob. <laughs> No way, he replies, not unless you bless me first. So the stranger asks Jacob for his name, which he then receives. Jacob, he says, the name his mother gave him, reportedly meaning either one who grasped the heel, a deceiver, or one who supplants. Seems a rather fitting name. Your name will no longer be Jacob, the man says, but Israel. Israel. 
In today's world, we hear that name and think of a country in the Middle East on the shores of the Mediterranean Sea. But the name's origin begins with this rebranding of this man, Jacob. His descendants would become known as the people of Israel, a nation of people who are God's own. Israel, we are told, means one who struggles with God. Your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with men and have overcome, the stranger tells him. Having received a, a new name, Jacob or Israel, wants to know the name of this stranger. He does not get an answer, but the man does give him the requested blessing and apparently disappears. Who was this mysterious man? <laughs> the truth is we are not told. Jacob assumes that he's been wrestling with God himself. The Old Testament prophet Hosea would later call the man an angel. Luther would say it was Jesus. Others suggest that the man was actually Jacob's brother, Esau. In this lifetime, I dare say we'll never really know for sure the identity of the man. I did come upon one commentary with a rather interesting take on this story from Genesis that the actual opponent Jacob wrestled so long and hard with was himself. That the mystery man was there to hold up a mirror in front of Jacob, forcing him to battle with himself, with the turmoil and wrongs he had created in the past, with what would come when the sun rose and he reunited with his twin. Have you ever found yourself seemingly in a wrestling match with yourself? Replaying our past, thinking about what I could have done differently. How could I have ever done that? Where is my life heading? What can I do to change the course now? Or is it too late? I'm talking about more than arguing with yourself over what to eat for dinner. This is deep down soul searching. What do we see in the mirrors that God puts in front of us? Jacob gives the location of this epic battle a new name, Peniel, saying, it is because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. In Exodus, God informed Moses that no one can see the face of God and live. Yet here, Jacob declares he did see God's face and survived to tell the tale. How can we reconcile these seemingly incompatible texts. Ah, well that's where the mirror comes back into the picture. While scripture tells us that we are made in God's image, we know that it doesn't mean we physically look like God or vice versa. And we know ever since the incident in the Garden of Eden that the image of God in us has been damaged, can be restored only by God through Christ. But yet, if we look closely in that mirror, could it be that we see the image of God looking back at us? Paul would later write to the church in Corinth, for now, 
we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part. Then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. Looking into a mirror, do we see evidence of God, even dimly? When Jacob looked, it resulted in an epic struggle. How did what he saw reflect what God wanted of him? Did his life truly reflect God or distort his image like mirrors in an amusement park funhouse? Whether the man Jacob wrestled with was actually God himself is beyond our ability to determine. But we have a huge advantage over Jacob. You see, we know God was incarnate and became a man in the form of Jesus. Jesus showed us exactly what God was like and what he wants each of us to reflect in our daily lives. Think about how different the world we live in would be if whenever anyone looked in a mirror, we saw less of ourselves and more of Jesus. What if we concentrated on wrestling with ourselves, our own actions and beliefs, studying how they reflect God's image? rather than constantly trying to battle and wrestle with the man. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. As we prepare to celebrate Holy Communion together, we invite you to sing along with our hymn of preparation, Come, Share the Lord. May its lyrics inspire us as we ready ourselves to share the Lord's Supper together. We gather here in Jesus' name. His love is burning in our hearts like living flame. Come take the bread. Come drink the cup. Come share the Lord. Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. They will come from east and west and from north and south and sit at table in the kingdom of God. To remind us of this, we each come to our own tables for now, in our homes. Yet, this variety of tables still represents the larger table, where all are welcome and the feast will be bounteous for those there. According to Luke, 
when our risen Lord was at table with some of his disciples, he took the bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. As always, we begin our celebration of the sacrament of communion by thanking God. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Eternal God, holy and mighty, it is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise and to worship you in every place where your glory abides. Blessed are you, strong and faithful God. All your works, the height and the depth, echo the silent music of your praise. In the beginning, your word summoned light. Night withdrew and creation dawned. As ages passed unseen, waters gathered on the face of the earth and life appeared. When the times at last had ripened and the earth grown full in abundance, you created in your image man and woman the stewards of all creation. You gave us breath and speech that all the living might find a voice to sing your praise and to celebrate the creation you call good. So now, with all the powers of heaven and earth, we sing the ageless hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. O holy God, how wonderful is the work of your hands. When sin had scarred the world, you entered into covenant to renew the whole creation. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, as a father joyfully welcomes his own, you embraced a people as your own and filled them with longing for a peace that would last and for a justice that would never fail. Through countless generations, your people hungered for the bread of freedom. From them you raised up Jesus, your son, the living bread, in whom ancient hungers are satisfied. He healed the sick, though he himself would suffer. He offered life to sinners, though death would hunt him down. But with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms and surrendered his spirits. We owe our lives and praise to you for that offering. Yet we come to you not as beggars, but as faithful followers, praying on behalf of those we love. Today we pray for Jerry Moten and for Bob Stevens that both of their recoveries will go well and fast. 
We pray for Kathy Watts and Johnny Frazier. Our prayers for Jean, for Penny and her friend Lorraine, for continuing healing for Alan and Corinne and Buster. Our prayers continue for Joyce and her family, for Ray, for Mitchell, for Rick and Leanne, for Vinnie and Lee, for Claudette and Pat Button, for Jody, Debbie, and Barbara, for Sandra, for Linda, for Gary and for Chris, for Adrian, for Larry, and for Mary. Eternal God, let your Holy Spirit move in power over us and over these earthly gifts of bread and wine, that they may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. And that way we may become one in him. May his coming in glory find us ever watchful in prayer, strong in truth and love, and faithful in the breaking of the bread. Then at last, all peoples will be free, all divisions healed, and with your whole creation, we will sing your praise through your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup. And he said, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. So every time that you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the saving death of the risen Lord until he comes. The gifts of God for the people of God. Come, share the Lord. The body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Take and eat.
Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you that you have fed us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet in your eternal kingdom. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, let us confess before God and each other what we as Christians believe, using the words of the ancient Nicene Creed. The words will appear on your screen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The music that was playing during communion was a special piece prepared by Ashley for this occasion. Please be sure to thank her for her continuing work with us at Robinson Memorial. I know she misses seeing y'all and sends along her greetings. And as we near the end of yet another service, please sing along with our closing hymn, Join All the Glorious Names. The words will appear on your screen.
Thank you for joining with us today in worship and in the sharing of Holy Communion. Thank you as well for your continuing support of this church's mission through your gifts, tithes, and offerings. In case you need it, the address will appear on your screen shortly. Also, remember our school supplies challenge and join us again next week, won't you? God has shown you what is good. But what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and give you his peace now and forevermore. Amen.